Jérémy, c'est bon All right. Are we good? All right. Welcome to all. Uh, I'm uh, Sebastian, uh, founder and CEO at uh, Algorithmic, and this is Jeremy. Uh, he will be doing a uh, demos today. Uh, you will have demos. Um, we're very, very excited today to, uh, to be here at Seagraph uh, for the Substance Days at Seagraph 2018. Um, it's uh, a few words. Uh, so I will be speaking uh, over a few slides first, and then you will have uh, something more interesting, which is uh, the demos of the tools themselves. But a few words about Substance Days first. Uh, what, what are the Substance Days? So um, it's actually our way to um, uh, like meet the community and for the community to meet us as well at the same time and uh, to learn from us, to learn from the most advanced users, um, what they can do with Substance, how they can uh, improve themselves, etc. And it's, um, it's a very important part for, of, uh, um, of the company, actually. It's become something very, very important. And actually, so much so that uh, we've constantly added new dates and new locations for Substance Days all over the, the planet. And so to get as, as close as possible to our users. So we started in Hollywood. The first one was uh, located in Hollywood actually two, a few days before SIGGRAPH two years ago. Uh, it was an awesome thing and uh, it was uh, held at the Nomon uh, School of Visual Effects there. It was a great, great time. And so we figured, okay, we, we, have, to, we have to do that again. And we did that again uh, at, uh, at uh, GDC in San Francisco and in Asia in Shanghai, uh, Seoul, Korea, Tokyo, uh, Japan. And lately, the last one was, uh, the latest one was uh, in, uh, in London, uh, in uh, May, if I'm not mistaken, or June. And um, so it's, the goal, again, is to, uh, to meet with the community. So here's, the, um, here's a shot of the one we, we did in, uh, in Shanghai. It's 450 people, um, and it's a lot of people, actually, when you, when you look, uh, when you stand up there. And, uh, it's, uh, it, was, it was a blast, like uh, Shanghai was a blast, but Tokyo was a blast as well, Seoul was a blast. Actually, we, there are users of Substance all over, the, all over the world, and meeting these guys is always a, always a pleasure. Um, it's also a matter for us to have awesome speakers, like uh, Zhilong Shu uh, from China here uh, on the right. He's the author, obviously, of uh, that piece here, but of many more, and you've seen his work, I'm pretty sure, on Heart Station. Uh, he's a, I mean, his level is stellar. Is one of the best uh, 3D artists I've seen in my life period. And uh, we were very fortunate to have him uh, talk at the Substance Days uh, Shanghai a few months back. Um, also on the left, you have um, Glauco Longhi from Sony Santa Monica, uh, one of the best, uh, um, again, 3D artists in the world period, uh, sculptor and uh, textual artist, and Josh Lynch, uh, one of the most advanced substance designer users out there as well. So um, that was for Tokyo, for instance, and, uh, but there, are, there have been many, many more um, uh, speakers. Uh, you, will, you will see some today as well. All right, so speaking of the community, um, I cannot resist, every time I do a, a Substance Day uh, keynote, I cannot resist to just browse through a few uh, uh, images of creations from the community of substance users. And it can span from everything like realistic or not realistic, uh, whatever the, the theme, whatever the, the, the technique. This is very important, actually. This one I, is one of my favorite because it's not realistic, it's not photo real. Uh, it's not the intent here. The intent here is to create something that makes, um, that conveys um, something, but not through technical details like uh, 
the quality of the materials themselves, like the quality meaning the um, proximity of between materials, digital materials, and real materials. Here it's, uh, it's um, way more cartoonish, but it's, uh, it's the case here as well. Uh, I love the uh, link here. Um, but yeah, I, I, we, we enjoy so much like browsing Altstation and Behance and all these uh, sites, um, Sketchfab as well, to, to, to see how the, the creations of our, of our users. So it's, uh, it's made mostly, uh, uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's a great feeling, obviously. This is interesting. It's a, it's a, it's a piece that is uh, entirely procedural. And Nikola uh, Damjanov is uh, um, really important for us uh, these days, and you will see why. Also, he's been like testing out uh, Substance Alchemist, uh, Project Alchemist. Sorry, it's not a product yet, but uh, Project Alchemist for us um, and uh, have, have, um, deeply. Um, this this work, for instance, also is like perfect. Like, nothing to say about like the quality of those, this wood, um, how it's been aged, uh, and uh, will it. Uh, Purcell uh, made made an awesome job here. Anyway, uh, Pauline Boiteux as well. He's uh, one of the <laughs> leading substance designer artists out there these days. Um, I think uh, what she's producing is uh, worth uh, worth uh, looking at, really. Anyway, so just um, browsing through an uh, incredible piece of art. Uh, also, <laughs> we can stumble upon like uh, stuff like Jonathan Benenou. Um, who is uh, an artist at Ubisoft and, and does that on, the, on his spare, uh, spare time. And this is entirely procedural. There is no uh, geometry there. Um, again, here it's entirely procedural. So uh, um, they use only Substance Designer to produce all these leaves, all the stones, all the little uh, wood uh, elements, the, the moss, and uh, the mix thereof. So it's uh, really impressive, really impressive to see. Here again, same idea, no geometry. Like basically, on this thing, you have two triangles. <laughs> and the rest is coming from the height map, the normal map, the albedo, I mean, base color map, um, and, uh, and roughness, and metallic, etc. It's all coming from the textures. And all these textures have been, have been procedurally generated, which means that he can generate variations of that given texture very quickly. Um, that, as well, is entirely procedural. <laughs> it's actually a joy to just, like, Try to um, try to guess what's uh, what's going on there. Uh, a lot is going on, but the first time I, I saw uh, going going back a bit, sorry, but it was the first time I saw this. I mean, one of the pieces from uh, Jonathan. I did not realize it was like entirely procedural. So I was like, okay, it's good, but it's not like uh, okay. The gold is looking good, but I didn't get the fact that not only the gold was made procedurally, but everything, like every shape. <laughs> so it was uh, it was a bit crazy. A uh, good example is, and one of the masters at that game is Daniel Thager. Uh, again, uh, like that thing is actually uh, built on top of a very simple piece of geometry. <laughs> right. So, again, one more example from Daniel. Um, so you, you, you can see that there is um, some kind of a fuzzy uh, line between textures and models and shapes. And uh, we're, we're very happy to see uh, people like exploring these uncharted territories. Um, this, is, this is impressive. This as well, this, is, this has been made, it's not a, I mean, these are posters, but these are, have been made with Substance Designer. <laughs> and the proof is here. Like uh, Nikola, again, Nikola Demjanov, I was talking about uh, earlier, he made this. Um, he must be mad to some degree, <laughs> but the good mad, you know? Right, so uh, <laughs> impressive and and crazy at the same time. Anyway, um, more classical, I would say, would be uh, this uh, use uh, of uh, substance for textures again, materials again, but uh, not so classical in what we call uh, algorithmic new the new markets like uh, industrial design, architecture, visual effects, um, and these these are good examples of uh, how to use the materials not to produce like aged rusted uh, materials, but uh, uh, pristine, pristine materials that well, are super important in the design process of a shoe or whatever product you're creating, really. Because that without the materials, that vans, without the materials, would, wouldn't be the same, right? You, you wouldn't have the same feeling of that part or the, the, um, the fabric, the plastic, etc. So this, is, this, this uh, implied uh, creating the materials first and potentially using substance source, 
modify uh, what you can find on Substance Source and coming up with, uh, with the result you want. Uh, this is a rendering. Uh, I love it. Uh, Sam is one of an uh, amazing artist. Um, and uh, this is all texture using Substance. So beautiful work, beautiful work. And that, again, like in that case, the, the goal is uh, photo photorealism. And um, they, uh, they're pretty good at uh, achieving something for the real uh, in that case. I like the atmosphere here. Although I'm not a fan of cinnamon, by the way, I have to say. And I, yeah. Anyway, good environments. Um, awesome environments, awesome images. So to, or in order to sell your project, your new house, or it's, it's important to feel also the materials themselves, right? So you have to. If you can do something like this, you you you're, you're feel better. Also, people just use, I mean, the materials can sometimes play a very central role in some productions. This video here is um, yeah, brutalism 101. It's centered around materials. What do you think about it? the roughness map. <laughs> anyway, you get the idea. Oh, let's keep, let's keep the thing. So you don't know the end and you have to you have to do it to, to find it. But anyway that's uh this this these are good examples of uh, just people producing this type of art and it's relying a lot on materials obviously. Uh, interior, car interiors as well, um, uh, environments, and uh, not so real, photo real, not so real, whatever. All the users uh, we, um, we have can produce like very varied stuff. Also, this is a good example of uh, photogrammetry uh, based workflow. Uh, and uh, all the inputs you get from, I mean, all the outputs you get from a photogrammetry dedicated tool you can process them inside of substance and produce uh, produce these results. Also, I like this. It's uh, <laughs> crazy in a different way, but it's awesome. It's awesome, and it's all materials done with substance. Anyway, so we don't want to forget one thing, which is sorry. Let me go back. The, which is also uh, I've been showing the, the the work from the community, uh, but you know we're coming from the the game development. I mean. The, the first clients, the first users of Substance are, uh, have been um, uh, game developers. And so I wanted to show you a show reel, a uh, quick show reel of all the productions. I mean, not all, but the latest ones um, done with Substance in games.
All right. Always a pleasure to see that and all these names and all these games being done with Substance. So it's a, it's a real pleasure and always a pleasure to show it. I don't know about you, but uh, I enjoy seeing uh, <laughs> that on, on, from here. And um, anyway, so interestingly also, I was mentioning of these new markets that we're going after um, or coming to us actually to ask for, for Substance. Um, we see more and more use of Substance in visual effects. Uh, visual effects and a good example is Pacific Rim Uprising here uh, and we'll have a talk this afternoon by uh, uh, DNAG sorry um, about how the or how Mark Austin who should be maybe in the room um, used a substance designer to actually produce uh, a large amount of textures for some of the Jaegers uh, in the in the movie so again super proud super proud to to see that kind of uh, usage and if we start to actually uh, list the, the, the triple A movies, let's call them this way, uh, who have been, who, uh, for which uh, some of the VFX has been done using substance, it's, it's growing very, very fast. And so that's, uh, that's good to, to witness as well. And actually, when we made the math, just the math, the pure math, like number of tech, number of licenses, substance, if you combine designer, painter, uh, and other tool set, the whole tool set is actually number one in VFX animation, We're number one in terms of number of licenses. It's <laughs> we, we realized this actually not so long ago. We're like, oh, well, wait a minute. But uh, so it's, uh, it's, uh, it's good. All right, architecture as well. And uh, lots of uh, more and more usage of uh, uh, not only uh, substance, but real-time techniques overall, right? You see a lot of uh, Unreal, Unity, and uh, substance with that. Uh, industrial design, I was mentioning this, all these products, again, you want to, you want to create pristine materials, but they, they look as realistic as possible. You, can, you, you need to feel the materials. If I look at that image, I know how, I mean, how this uh, fabric material will uh, feel under my, under my, uh, uh, my fingers. So um, pieces like this as well. Um, and obviously more, more pieces together uh, combined gives you this. Um, uh, lately also we've seen, uh, we've been very happy to see Alp Alpine or Alpine. I don't know how to pronounce it in English, actually it's a French thing, but um, doing uh, designs with, uh, with substance again. So interior, uh, car interiors, uh, like also this, uh, this car seat uh, by Foresha and uh, like the level, of, the level of details you need to, put into, into these materials is, uh, is extreme. Anyway, the list is growing fast as well. I'm super proud of some of these num names in there, obviously. Um, let's say NASA. <laughs> okay, I say it all the time, but I'm very proud to have these guys here. All right, and all the others are great as well. Um, and uh, it's interesting to see uh, how much uh, use of real-time techniques, computer-generated imagery, and substance uh, is being made by these uh, by these companies. All right, so I want to talk a bit about the products. And uh, lately, we've been uh, working a lot on substance source and producing more and more content, more and more materials. Speaking of materials, um, uh, we've been pushing hard on fabrics. So if you go on substance source now, you will see a lots lots of, of, of different fabrics that you can tweak again uh, to uh, slightly modify, make them your own, customize. Um, like this um, uh, leather, for instance, uh, it can be stitched this way or painted that way. If you carefully, I mean, I did that yesterday. If you, for instance, focus on that guy here, it doesn't move, right? Or it moves like slightly because it's the same uh, leather actually, but it's been uh, colored in a different way. It's been stitched in a different way as well. So this is a type of uh, uh, parametrization you can uh, you can get access to uh, using uh, substances, substance by parametric textures overall. Also lately, we've been pushing a lot on uh, automotive. Uh, maybe you've seen the automotive drops that we've, we, we've done. Interior, exterior. We even created a car um, just um, to be able to apply these materials uh, onto them, onto it, and, and do showcases. Um, we'll see that car later uh, today. Um, all these materials, car paints, obviously, but also uh, like uh, these uh, reflectors, that lights, and et cetera. Uh, all, all procedural, by the way, again. So that means you can, you can customize them to make them your own and apply them. Also this uh, clay material was super important to actually do something like this, uh, which is like the digital equivalent of clay uh, modeling and clay, uh, working clay uh, for, for automotive. 
Uh, and this is the car. This is the X Town, and uh, we used that car to, um, yeah, try out things. And so uh, we've uh, made a presentation of that car at, in London during the substance day, later substance days. Anyway, so here is an example of what I was mentioning: this uh, parametric, parametric textures and materials. So if you apply substances, the substances you can find on substance source. On this uh, very simple shape, you can obtain the tire like uh, material, but also the rim. And the rim being super parametric itself, you can explore many uh, variations of, uh, of uh, that, uh, that given uh, per, um, uh, texture. And so one thing I want to show you now, which is not released yet, is something that will help actually browse substance source and get a better understanding of the, all the parameters that, that come with uh, a given uh, a given material. So this, uh, I will uh, leave it to uh, to Jeremy for a few minutes. It's, this is a demo of uh, something we are adding currently to uh, Substance Source. So you, when you browse Substance Source, you will be able to tweak the parameters. You see on the right here, you have a list of parameters for that given material, and you will be able to tweak them uh, uh, through the browser and explore the parameter space from the browser. So uh, Jeremy, can you can you show that? Can we switch to the uh, other computer, please? There you go. All right. Is my mic working? Nope. Yep. No. Yep. Okay. All right. Um, so yeah, in Sinlao on Source, um, you had access to a 3D view, and, and to view the, the different settings you could apply on a material, uh, all you had access to was, was Big View, a bunch of presets. So we would just give you an idea of what the material would look like in different different conditions, but there was no way to actually see the whole range of, of parameters that you could you could play with. And sometimes some of those substances have 20, 30 parameters. Uh, so now we have uh, a cloud uh, 3D player that allows us to uh, look at the textures in real time and uh, kind of uh, tweak this texture to really see each parameters, um, what it's doing. Uh, I can have some uh, color variations here. Um, I can have more or less of the broken tiles. And you can see it's pretty fast. Uh, we kind of generate it in lower resolution. And as soon as it's ready, we, ge we get you like a higher resolution. So you can really see the whole range of, of parameters for each, uh, for each material. Uh, same thing for this one here. This one has, has two, but it's, it's pretty fast, pretty cool to see um, different parameters you can apply on the substances right here. So what, what's happening here, if you, yeah, what's happening here is the, um, uh, what's going on is that uh, we're using the Sketchfab viewer here, and when we play with the parameters, what it does is sends a new value or value, uh, set of values to a server. And the server, in that case, you see it's a uh, region USA, so it's in Portland, Oregon, uh, in that case, but it could be everywhere in the world. Uh, it sends uh, all these new data, and on the server, uh, our engine, Substance Engine, is actually recomputing all the outputs in 512, like resolution, low resolution, so that when you, t when you tweak, you actually see the resolution going down. Can you show that? Yeah. And um, when you tweak, you see the resolution go down, so that you can actually get a sense for the, the impact of that tweak and then when you release, it's actually computing the whole 2K or 4K or whatever uh, set of uh, bitmaps outputs, then uh, getting downloaded and applied onto this object again, right? So it's using the server to, uh, to actually come up with uh, this variation. So you don't need uh, a beefy computer to do that. You can do that on, a, on an iPad or um, a small computer and just still browse the parameter uh, of a given, a given material. So that's uh, something that will come uh, later uh, uh, later this uh, year, uh, hopefully in a few uh, few weeks, um, and uh, that will that will give uh, uh, the opportunity to substance user, uh, substance source user, to get a better sense of what they are actually downloading. Right. Thank you. So, can we switch to my computer again? So, speaking of uh, products, um, I will talk about the uh, the products that we released uh, lately, very quickly. Um, maybe you don't know, but uh, we just released a new version of the Substance uh, plugin for 3ds Max. Uh, it can do more things. Uh, it's more stable. It's uh, it's uh, working better, and so it's um, uh, very uh, very uh, happy to have it uh, out now. And you can see here, uh, it's uh, uh, you can keyframe parameters. Uh, so that's uh, that's opening up uh, new opportunities again to uh, to be creative with your with your materials. Um, and it works with uh, most of the renderers out there. Uh, so in that case, I think it was uh, via Ray. Um, also, Substance Designer Summer uh, Update has been uh, released a few weeks back. And uh, this includes a new uh, uh, revamped UI and UX 
So uh, you can see it here. It has like very important features like uh, nodes alignment, <laughs> which for crazy people, I, I say crazy all the time, by the way, I realize. But many, anyway, um, uh, this is super important for some people, including me, by the way, I have to admit. <laughs> all right. And uh, um, the um, bakers are way faster now, almost uh, five times faster. Uh, this is, uh, this is um, the bakers before and now. Uh, this is a summer release of Substance Designer, and uh, it's, it's going super fast. Um, also, very creative stuff like um, um, reaction diffusion algorithms uh, are available, et cetera, et cetera. So you have a bunch of new features in Substance Designer uh, in this new release. I invite you to, to take a look at them. Uh, also, we released Substance Painter a few days ago, uh, summer uh, edition, and this one also includes uh, many, uh, many new features that are um, uh, of interest, uh, Alembic support for import, so that you can have, uh, especially uh, uh, cameras. Uh, super important to import cameras. We have uh, we go both ways for GLTF. Uh, let's say you want Sketchfab browsing this thing, and you you want to uh, open it in Substance uh, Painter, you can do it now and export again the GL, um, a GLTF uh, file. So that's um, that uh, has to be done. Also, new controls uh, for the projection. I mean, new gizmos for projections. Uh, super super um, uh, handy to control what you're doing. And mm, the biggie maybe was uh, subsurface scattering support in the uh, real-time viewport and in the painting uh, viewport uh, so that you can uh, see what you're, actually see what you're doing when you paint a character. Uh, that, was, uh, that was super important. So um, I'm super proud to, to, have this, uh, to have this out now. All right, so I invite you to uh, get to uh, see it if you, if, you don't, if you don't have it yet. So, it's time now to talk about um, uh, stuff that is not out yet again. Uh, and uh, I will start with this thing uh, that uh, is, I mean, will be presented this, uh, this week. It's actually a link between Substance Painter and Random Man for Maria. But the new link, actually, that uh, we did at uh, Algorithmic uh, Labs, uh, and Davide uh, Pesare, um, who joined recently, and, and Francois Bone, uh, they produced this thing. Um, to, uh, to have this, this workflow that is uh, way more efficient now. So let's say you, you activate the, um, the link now, uh, choose whatever resolution you want to work with, and then when you do modification now in Substance Painter, you actually see them propagate very, very quickly into Maya and Random Man. So this is Random Man 22, which is uh, super fast. And you can see, uh, I mean, in, in terms of look dev, uh, it, is, um, it is really, really uh, efficient. Uh, by the way, this uh, Hank model has been uh, scanned uh, just uh, for the fun. And uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's something that uh, we are working on, like this new live link technology, uh, super fast, so that it will, it will, we will improve all of our live links between all like third applications and third renderers, third party renderers uh, in, the, in, the, in the future. Um, also, something new. And uh, that, <laughs> that we're super proud of, actually. <laughs> um, we realized, and we're suffering, like you guys, uh, with all these messages of you don't have the right version for this file, and uh, uh, or a new version is uh, coming uh, out now. So how to update that, and how to make sure you can control the versions you have, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So we figured, okay, let's do a launcher. And it's called Project uh, Trebuchet. And uh, that won't be the final name, but um, we couldn't resist doing this meme. And actually, that guy here is the author of the meme. Yeah, you, Gianni. <laughs> Don't pretend you're not. OK. All right, so let's do a quick demo of uh, that mm -hmm. thing uh, called uh, Project Trebuchet. And uh, that will be, uh, I hope you like it, but it should be fairly uh, useful. And Usic? All right. Um, so yeah, now we have uh, Project Trebuchet here that you can find in the taskbar, and uh, you can use it to just um, uh, launch your, your Substance tools, and you can also open it and see a whole bunch of information that you can um, gather with all, all the latest events and blog posts that we've been that we've been posting on our website. And for each tool, uh, you have a tab here where you can, uh, of course, launch the latest version, uh, find tutorials, uh, again, latest news about new release. Uh, you also have access to all previous versions here, so you can install uh, whatever version you need. 
Um, and you have that for Substance Painter, Substance Designer, uh, soon Project Alchemist will be ready. And uh, you also have access to Substance Source uh, right here and uh, Substance Academy to find tutorials. In the future, we plan on adding other, uh, other content to this, such as accessing all our integrations, which right now are a little difficult to find on the website uh, for all the uh, Cinema 4D, Maya, 3DS Max. Uh, all will be accessible here. You'll be able to have the latest version every time. Uh, so it should just be a, a nice uh, hub for everything substance uh, on your computer. Can we uh, switch back? Thank you. Yeah, so that will be uh, out uh, when it's ready. <laughs> so we don't know when exactly. Mm -hmm. But um, later, later this year, uh, obviously very, very soon now. Um, yeah, super, super practical. All right, can we switch back? Yeah, Sorry, switch yeah, we want you to say something. No, I just need to switch back to your... Uh, switch back laptop. to my computer again. Sorry about that. Just to see the meme again. Yeah, here you go. Drake, Canadian, right? So... <laughs> All right, let's talk about this guy, Project Alchemist. So today we promised we would do, we'll be doing a, a first uh, demo of the tool. So we will be doing a first demo of the tool. Obviously, uh, the tool is not ready to be released, but uh, if we go slow with the mouse, it's okay. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> it's, no, I mean, it's, uh, it's, it's taking great shape. It's awesome. So Project Alchemist, there's a, a, few, um, a few words about it before we jump into the demo. As a, as a reminder, it's a new standalone product. Uh, that will come as a new standalone product in the Substance ecosystem. Um, and it's dedicated to digital material creation, but what we call augmented digital material creation. And what we and here by, what we want to say by uh, augmented is a mix of techniques. And the techniques that are useful to the artists and the digital materials creators, uh, more than only one thing or one or two things at best. Um, so uh, the new, the new, um, I mean, the new biggie here being uh, AI. Obviously, we wanted to to see how uh, AI could be useful to artists and to designers. And uh, turns out it is it is useful. Uh, it's not replacing artists and designers, at least not for now. And I don't see that in a very, I mean, the foreseeable future. But uh, still, there are tools that we can use as tools again. And the power and the beauty of this comes with like the mix of all these techniques. Like, for example, Substance Designer, you can do procedurally, you can procedurally create all these crazy things I've shown you at the beginning of the talk. But at the same time, uh, you, if you're not like into doing everything procedurally, you can mix procedural techniques and uh, uh, scan data and produce something that is good, right? Uh, the output being the only, the only uh, important thing. And if you want to finish by hand, if you want to make sure that it looks exactly the way you want, you can have the tools that allow you to do so. Um, Substance Alchemist is here to be a streamlined, uh, I mean, a tool that is uh, here to help streamline the creation, management, exploration of uh, digital materials. And so before we go and jump into the, the demo, I want to, to say thank you to all the um, uh, super alpha testers uh, who've been able to use it and give us feedback, uh, including Nicola Damjanov, I've been mentioning uh, uh, a lot. So these are uh, materials that have been, he's created using only one image. Um, uh, yeah, you will, we'll show you the process. And uh, doing variations, very quickly variations of that given material, we'll show you how mixing materials together to obtain crazy, uh, interesting things, um, not in photo real, things as well. There is no uh, limitation in what you can do, again. Uh, but also Victor Fréchard and uh, Alexandre Martin have been uh, able to produce a lot of content and interesting stuff and give us some feedback. So thanks to them. And now we can jump into the, uh, into the demo, I guess. All right, time for the demo. All right. All right. So All right. it does exist. It is here. Um, all right, so as, as Sebastian said, uh, it's, it's very early, so the demo should go smoothly. If it doesn't, please bear with us. Uh, it, it, it should be fine. All right, so, um, so you, can do, you can do a lot of different things in Alchemist. And um, you can see the first tab I'm on here, it's called Explore, and uh, it's really a way to kind of manage all your substances. And you can create libraries and collections, and um, the same way as you can in the, in, the, in the old substance player, you can also um, kind of tweak around uh, the substances and, and see how they work. So, for example, for this substance here, 
Um, I have a bunch of presets, so I can easily just switch to a, to a different preset. Uh, but then I can also um, select other materials, uh, see the presets, and also uh, see the tweaks that are associated with these with these materials. So I have uh, one here that's actually based on the, on the scan data, and uh, this one, for example, is entirely uh, procedural. In this case, we have a lot of setting, a lot of uh, parameters we can play with. Um, and again, I can just like you could in the in the player before or in the in the uh, cloud player, I can kind of adjust um, all the settings and kind of play around with the uh, with the material. Uh, when I'm happy with with a, with a setting, um, I can actually go back to my preset and maybe save that as as a different one. So maybe just change the random seed a little bit, and uh, maybe change the color of this, so maybe a little browner, and then I can go here and um, just create a, a preset. I have a new preset in my substance, and I can also just save that preset into uh, my collection if I want to access it later when I'm working on uh, other stuff in, in um, Alchemist. So um, now what I'll do actually is I'll uh, switch to the Inspire um, tab, and um, I'm going to grab that same same material I have here and uh, set it as my material in which I want um, to create variations from. And you see here, we now have a color extraction uh, mode over here. And I have a, a bunch of different uh, settings I can play with here. I'll explain a little bit about them later. And um, what I'll go is, I'll go over here in my grounds and look for inspiration. Um, and here I have a bunch of, a bunch of images that I can use to change the look of my, of my material. And so I can easily just uh, grab one of these, drag and drop it here, and as I do that, it will create uh, a new version of my, uh, of my substance based on uh, the colors that we extracted here. Then I can really adjust this if I want, for example, to extract more colors. In this case, all these colors are kind of similar, but uh, if I take something else like this here, uh, we'll just create another variation again, uh, and it will just adapt all these different colors to my input. So it's very cool to be able to um, have these materials that have all these settings instead of going manually and edit the settings to find what you're looking for. You can just get a concept art or a piece of or a photo, just drag and drop it here, and the material will kind of adapt as much as it can to that photo. Um, and we can do it on one material. We can also do it on the whole collection of materials at the same time. So um, these were the kind of an example on the grounds. Um, I also have a, a bunch of letters that I want to play, play around with. So I'm just going to collapse these and um, go look for my letters over here. And I have a whole bunch here. I'm just going to import into um, my library here in Alchemist. Um, and if I go back to my uh, Explore again, I can just uh, look at all these materials. Maybe I'm just going to reduce a little bit the displacement because these uh, stitches are popping out a little too more, a little too much. There we go. That's a little better. Um, and so I can just, I can just um, go around these and, and kind of uh, play around the settings. Again, I want to have, I have this leather. I really like it. I just want to create cr um, kind of variations to fit with different, um, different patterns and different uh, designs. So what I'll do is I'll uh, go in and grab it, put it here. I can clear my older variations here. And um, I'll go grab some other, um, some other inspiration I have here. Not here. There you go. And here I have inspiration images that are much more kind of design oriented, um, where I can, again, just going to go for uh, two uh, colors here, because we, we basically have two different colors on this material. So I'm just going to extract only two. And uh, first thing, for example, I'll take that lava, bring it here, and we'll get like a cool kind of uh, black leather with some uh, orange stitches. I can do the same thing with that uh, lipstick, for example, and then we'll get kind of a, that nice little um, um, flesh-colored uh, leather with the, the pink, uh, pink stitches. In this case, um, it actually picked up the background because that, that's what uh, makes the most of the image. But in this case, what interests us is actually the color of the object that we, that we took a picture of, not the background. So instead of doing rep the, using representative, which basically gives us the colors that are more present in the, in the image, I'm going to choose deepness. And that will take the colors that are really more uh, deep and that have a little more um, uh, saturation to it, and will kind of discard the background. So if I take deepness, now I have something that really matches that object, where I have that um, kind of uh, fuchsia pink leather and I got my um, kind of dark stitch with the little green highlight on it. 
Um, so it really picks up the colors that we actually want in this, uh, in this um, uh, image. And so again, we can do that on the whole collection if we want to. So uh, if instead of, um, let's say I'm going to create a new uh, collection here, and uh, I'm just going to add a bunch, of, uh, a bunch of letters in here, uh, but this one too. So these are all very different materials, and what I'll do is I'll uh, grab this and put it over here, and it will create those variations for all my different, uh, all my different letters at the same time. So that's kind of the, the, inspire, uh, the inspire part of, of uh, Substance Humans. We have, again, on all these different um, kind of areas of the tool I'm going to show, what we have here is kind of a, the, the beginning, and we have a lot more kind of um, options and features and, and methods to do um, to improve that that are in the work that we can show yet. Uh, but that's kind of the first the first step here. If you want to add anything at, at yeah. any time, just uh, well, feel free to. Yes, awesome. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, all right, so uh, we did explore, we did we, we look at inspire. So now we're going to look at that create um, that create part. And so um, this is going to be an uh, interesting part. So uh, we'll use grounds to, um, for this part of the demonstration. And the first thing we'll do is um, I'll just do the photo. So if those of you who have used uh, Bitmap to Material before, it's a way to create material out of a simple photograph. And so we kind of uh, integrate the Bitmap to Material into Alchemist and make it more streamlined and, and um, increase the quality of the, of the result we get. So, what I'll do is I'll just switch here my environment a little bit. Since we're looking at the ground, I'm just going to uh, take a plane. I'm going to switch my environment too to something a little more uh, outdoorsy. And uh, switch my UV, get a little more displacement. Um, and that should be good. So um, let's get my bitmap from here. We'll just drag and drop it here. And um, it will detect that it's an image that I can use with bitmap material. So it will. Uh, automatically select it. If I click OK, um, it will just generate my material. So I have a little too much displacement here. It's going to just a little bit. That's cool. There we go. Um, and so we already have uh, a pretty cool material. If I uh, go here, I can adjust all the settings. And um, if I actually go, let's get a little more space, we can see that we generated normal map, uh, roughness, a high element occlusion. Uh, everything is here for, for material. Um, still, there are some adjustments that we, that we want to make. Um, the first one is, if you look at the side of my textures here, I have some seams, obviously it's just a photograph. Um, and the seams come from, um, during the displacement, that's because our height here has some very dark parts and some very uh, light parts due to the, the image that we, that we use as an input. So uh, we just want to have something a little more, um, just a little more uniform on the whole texture. So I'll go over here in my stack, and um, I have a bunch of filters that I can use for all sorts of different purposes. And um, the first thing I'm going to use is the equalizer. And so the equalizer will just take my height map and all the other channels and make sure that it will actually make, make a good tileable map. If I tile it over a terrain, uh, I won't have like, these huge uh, bumps all over the place that, that really uh, messes up the tiling. Now we have um, a nice uniform height map. Uh, we still have some, some pretty uh, nasty seams here because obviously we still, we still um, started from photograph. So if we look here, we still have, we'll still have the seams. So uh, what I'll do is I'll add a um, tiling filter here on my tiling. And um, there we go. Now I have a tiling texture. The thing is, by default, we can crop that texture a little too much. Um, so I'm just going to adjust uh, here where I'm cropping the texture. And so it, it's updating in real time uh, in the 3D view over here. And uh, I can kind of adjust it a little bit more. There we go. Um, and then I have a bunch of settings that I can play with to um, kind of change the way the tiling goes. So you can see it, you can see kind of the, the boundary of the tiling moving around in the 3D view. Uh, and so I'm just going to put it all right here, and that's it. Now we have a tiling textures. And now if I look at the, the final result here, uh, oops. now we have uh, a pretty cool tiling material with all our, ch uh, all our different channels. Um, the last thing I'm going to do here is uh, I'm going to use the clone patch. I just want to get rid of, of uh, a little part that I may not like in this, in this material. Um, so I'll, again, I'll just use uh, my list here, look for my clone patch tool. And um, 
I'm going to set up. Uh, it's really the same way as, a, as you, would, you would use a, a clone tool in Photoshop or in Substance Painter. I'm just going to set up a um, uh, point here, and then I'm just going to paint that little branch here. There we go. And so that we just, again, all the channels at the same time, it's just updating that, and now we, I'm, I got rid of that branch here. Um, all right, so we got a pretty cool uh, material here. Yeah. Um, the, the only thing is that uh, if you look at the, at the material right now, uh, we started from a photo, and it still looked very much like a photo that was applied on the plane. And that's because if I look at my um, base color, we still have all that lighting information in there. And, um, and um, it looks fine when you just look at the image, but if you have that, that map in any um, like real-time or, or uh, pre-rendered environments, you want the lighting to come from the actual lighting of your scene and not from whatever photo you took, uh, whatever environment you were in when you took that photo. And uh, that's where our um, AI comes into play. And uh, so we developed a um, delighter that we actually trained, uh, we trained uh, a neural network on uh, the source library and through thousands and thousands of materials and variations so that it would detect uh, how lighting works in, 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 uh, in materials. And uh, that will allow us to uh, actually remove that, that lighting. So let's go for it. It's going to take a few seconds. And a few more. A few more. And there we go. And so if you look at the, if you look at the, at the albedo now, um, if you look at the actual values um, of the albedo, you'll see that um, we really didn't, um, didn't remove any details. All the details are still here, but all the shadows that were uh, kind of the micro, micro shadows and the, and the, and the um, larger shadows uh, are pretty much gone. And so it kind of gives that, that fuzzy feeling on, on the map, but it's pretty just because that's how it would look like if you just had like a, f like a flood of, of, of light on the whole, on the whole uh, surface. And uh, that will give us a much better result uh, in 3D because now uh, if you look here, we get like some very, very strong shadows. And if I activate this, we get something that will, that will look actually much more natural in any kind of lighting environment. So if I uh, kind of move the light around, um, I'm going to get something a little more um, uniform here. Oops. Let me see what I have. This one is going to be very grazing, grazing angle. Um, there we go. So we still got all the details, but uh, the lighting is gone from the image. So now we have a material that uh, we're happy with, and we just want to save it in our library. So I'm just going to go here and uh, save my stack to my library. Uh, I'm actually going to create a collection first for my grounds. There we go, and uh, let's save that my grounds over here. And that's going to be my pebbles. There we go. So um, now that I have a material, I want to kind of improve that material to mix it with other materials and to add procedural data on, on top of it and different things. So I'm going to uh, clear my stack here. And uh, I'm going to clear that base material and just drag and drop this material in here. So that will be my, the base of my uh, material layering. And on top of it, uh, I just want to add another, another material. So I'm just going to go in here and have that um, uh, ground golf bunker material. I'm just going to drag and drop it in my um, viewport. And uh, it will give us, after a few seconds, uh, it will kind of blend that uh, sand material with our uh, original material. Here. Important, this is important here. What, uh, what uh, Jeremy is doing is uh, adding a procedural material on top of a, another one that is uh, that has been built just be before before us now, but um, that means that all all the filters, all the um, uh, tweaks, materials you can find on Substance Source, Substance Share that you created yourself, you can combine them there as well. The engine is integrated, obviously. Yeah. So here I have, I have against the substance. Uh, so I have a bunch of parameters I can play with. That sends a little too flat, uh, so I'm just going to switch it to uh, that after the rain setting. It'll give me like a little uh, kind of bumpy, uh, bumpy sands, and then I can adjust uh, the height of the sands to have, uh, just depending on how much I want to I want to blend it. So I may do something like this. So I have a little bit of sand here, and um, then I can add some height modulation, where I'm just gonna uh, add some noise to that to that sand to make it look more natural. We have some uh, patches where there is more more sand, and some others where there there isn't. 
And so we're starting to have material that's a little more, uh, that feels a little richer and um, that's a little more interesting. The next thing I'll do, I'll do is um, add some water to it. Good. So it, uh, that was actually um, taken on the beach. So uh, we'll just add some water. I'm uh, going to reduce a little bit the amount of water we have on there. It's a nice reflection. Um, we can add a little bit of dirt in the, dirt in the water. Um, something like this. So it's kind of like uh, low tides, kind of um, beach grounds. Um, and then the last thing I want to add is just a little bit of moss. Because we can. Uh, that's too much moss. It's too much. Uh, so uh, what I'll do is I'll just go uh, change a little bit of settings. That moss color is kind of crazy, so we're just going to adjust more it a little algaes, bit. More algae, I guess. Yeah, it's, it's more algae that we want. Something like this, and then we can kind of spread it a little more, have it kind of sit on top of these rocks. There we go. There we go. And now we have uh, a new material. And again, I can go in and kind of uh, save my stack to my ground collection. And this is going to be my little beach now. There we go. So um, that's kind of a part of um, the, create, the, create, the create part of, of, of Alchemy is where you can layer materials, effects, and this list is, is just the default list we have right now. Uh, you can add your any custom material, any custom filter you make. Um, some of these filters, like the AI stuff, is actually uh, uh, not a substance filter. It's really just a C++ filter. And we'll have an API that allows you to bring in your own C++ filters and your own AI filters in there. Um, so we expect, it, we expect the, 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 the range of things you can do with it to, to uh, really explode uh, after the release. Yeah, it's very important to, yeah, uh, to, to mention this. Uh, it's an open platform. Um, uh, this uh, API uh, for plugins has, uh, is something that is uh, very important for this tool. Um, and we've been working, for instance, we've been working with NVIDIA uh, on uh, integrating some of their technologies as a plugin. Uh, it was a super res thing uh, that is currently being tested out. Um, that is an example, but uh, anyone with um, uh, capable of uh, producing filters in C++ will be able to do it. And you will, I mean, using Substance Designer won't be the only option anymore. You will be able to do your own C++ filters as well. There's one thing I wanted to, you to do. Oh, there's actually another thing I'm going to do before that. Okay. Oh, sorry. Another, yeah, I'm going to do the normal sorry. thing and then I'll, I'll, I'll do your, your demo. Yeah, please. <laughs> uh, all right. So. Let me just switch here real quick to, um, I'm going to get that rounded uh, cylinder shape here. And um, what I'll do is, so I have my base material here. I'll just bring a custom filter. Oh, I didn't do the switches. I'll do it later. Um, so uh, let me add a normal. And um, in here, I'm just going to add um, a normal map. So let's go with this one here. So this is just a normal map that's from, um, it's from Substance, uh, an old Substance that we had built internally. And um, right now, we have a normal map, and we also have a height map. And uh, the height map was actually built from the normal map using our, height to normal, uh, our normal to height filter that we have in Substance Designer. And uh, that's the kind of results. Uh, and that, there we go. That's the kind of results uh, you'll get from, there we go, from uh, the filter. And uh, for hard surface stuff, I mean, it works for like organic stuff. For hard surface stuff, the issue is that um, you're going to get a lot of distortion uh, because that, that's just the state of the art today is just generating a height from a normal map is, is just very hard. And so um, um, you get a lot of distortions and, and issues where um, those things that were uh, on my normal map here, those, those little holes in my normal map, should be very subtle, but when you generate the height from it, uh, it gets it gets extremely strong. Um, and so what we did is we also uh, created a pretty cool filter that allows us to uh, generate the height from a normal map in a very very precise uh, way, and it works every time, no matter the material. Uh, so if I use this, you see that the height we get from it is actually much much closer to an actual bake of, of geometry that that it is from um, that it is from uh, just a processed image. 
you don't see it, but I like the fact that uh, the author of that, of that uh, algorithm is in the room right now, he's just back there. And the funny thing is that he's actually filming, like <laughs> he would film his, uh, his kid. <laughs> <laughs> That's your kid. <laughs> That's so funny. Uh, so yeah, it gives you, I mean, it, we, we, tried, we tried it on different things, and we tried it on, on baked meshes and on scanned materials, and uh, the results we get are, are so close to the original geometry. Uh, it's, it's really, really cool. Um, so I'll try it on another, uh, another material here. Um, typically this one, um, you can see like the result that Substance Designer gives us is, is horrible because that's just very flat surfaces, uh, very sharp edges. It's super hard to do anything with that with a normal map like this uh, to create a height map. Normal map is, is very clean. The height we get from, from Substance Designer is, is pretty horrible. And uh, if we use our filter here, uh, we get something that is super clean. And if you look at the displacement here, uh, it's, it's almost perfect compared to the displacement where we had the uh, substance designer method. This so is again, super useful when, uh, when, you, uh, when you do a photo, I mean, scan uh, object. You get, usually you get a, a normal, but not a height map. So getting a very, um, very good height map from that uh, is actually uh, doable now. Cool thing is that it, it's, also, it's also very fast. Um, if I, let me add some, uh, just something very simple here. I'm just adding some processed rocks in the, in the creases here. Um, because you, as can. you can see, because I can. <laughs> um, and uh, as you see, like the, the height map we get from Substance Designer is all over the place, because it doesn't, it doesn't really look like anything. Um, but if I use the, oops, if I use the um, normal to height, uh, I get a height map that, that actually makes sense. And um, I can, can go in and tweak this and add uh, more if I want to. Um, I can add pebbles all over the place. It's not going disrupt, to uh, disrupt the, the other um, kind of, uh, height map around it. And uh, that means that you can really layer stuff on top of it. And uh, our normal underneath is, our height map underneath is, is just stays perfectly flat and perfectly smooth. And it, it, it's real time, as you can see. It's the same as, as tweaking a substance. Um, all right, so last, last part of the demo. Um, so let me just set up a few things uh, for this. I'm going to go back to uh, our letters. So let's go here. Uh, we're going to bring a, a, a custom mesh here so you can uh, see the letters a little better. Oh, actually, uh, let's, try, let's try on this here first. Um, I'm going to switch our UV a little bit here. We're going to stay in 2K. And uh, I'm going to reduce the displacement because the displacement of the letter is always a little too much. And there we go. It's, it's a real life example. Yeah. You have something to do. Um, all right, so we'll use, uh, we'll use this letter over here. Yeah, let's use this guy. So um, let's go and create modes. And uh, we'll bring in our letter over here. Oops, my bad. Um, let's do it again. Oh, it should actually work. Um, I'm gonna have to make this. There we go. Um, all right, so I have my letter. Um, first thing I'll do is um, I'll add some some stitches to that letter. So I'm going to import a custom filter and add a little stitches here. Um, and the way that the stitches were, were actually built in those materials, uh, we can actually bring in a custom filter to, um, to customize the stitches uh, here very quick. So I can go here and uh, kind of change the pattern of the stitches. So if I want a square or a line or maybe I want a diamond uh, stitch. And um, then I can kind of switch uh, the amount of stitches I have and um, kind of the position of these stitches. And you can really, I mean, there's like tons of parameters. I'm not going to go through all of it, but you can really customize that stitch to look exactly what you're actually trying to, um, trying to create. So again, it's illustrating this mix of uh, uh, parametric textures, the stitches, and uh, scan data. Um, and, uh, and yeah, there, there's one filter we wanted to try. Yeah, so let's 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 try to do that. Um, so that's the part we haven't rehearsed yet. So, <laughs> um, I asked 
for it like uh, 10 minutes ago, so yeah. Not 10 minutes. All right, so that's going to be my uh, stitch leather. Didn't here. No crush yet, so. No crush yet, so hope, hopefully. So we have yeah. to push it. Um, all right, so I'm just going to clear all that stuff. Um, bring in my leather over here. And uh, this case, which is going to go with representative, and I don't care about my pink leather. Um, and we're going to bring a different kind of reference. Um, let's see over here. Uh, let's get let's go with with this one. We had to. Uh, <laughs> all right, we're gonna bring this and uh, just gonna extract with some colors. And uh, now we have a nice kind of uh, thing. Oh, mm -hmm. crush, but almost. And there yeah. we go. And now we have a nice kind of uh, friend theme. Um, French soccer team theme leather. Um, but obviously something is missing. Obviously something's missing. So we're going to save it in our library and go back to create here. Uh, let's clear my stack. And we're going to bring our new, our new cool leather in here. And uh, we're going to add a custom filter in here. So this uh, is also to illustrate the fact that it's all completely open. That custom filter has been done by Jerome like a few hours ago. Oh, my hair. Uh, it's and actually uh, on the stitch. And it's been done in Substance Designer. I'm try to so very this. quickly you can add your own filters in there, right? So uh, what's going on? Go I can go here. Actually in the go to the channel. Can anybody find my Come on Jerome, help me. Go to the pro. Oh I can position it? Yeah. Oh cool. I didn't <laughs> know. Um, all right, so we're here, and uh, I'll do it again. Let's put my custom filter, uh, emboss, and how do I position it? Mm. Cannot. See, so where is it, Jerome? <laughs> it's not there okay. anymore. All right. <laughs> It's all right. I'm just going to remove the stitches. Yeah, remove the stitches. We're going to do it without the stitches. <laughs> um, all right, so we'll go back to Inspire. That's why we rehearse. Uh, and uh, instead of using this one, I'm going to use uh, this material. Cool thing that's it's, it's pretty fast to generate other. Oh, I'm actually going to use the, the one I have in my library over here. <laughs> the one that doesn't have the it's stitches. It's the slowest joke ever, which is I bad know. for jokes usually. All right, there we go. We have our leather. Let's go back to create. Um, we're going to bring back our material. And then we're going to bring back our endless filter. There you go. And then we can just a little tweak. <laughs> just add a little second star. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank you. All right. We got it. <laughs> <laughs> Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a soccer fan, so I have to admit, so I asked for that last minute change. All right, so going back to my slides now. Yeah, thank you. Um, so you've seen this uh, um, first demo ever of uh, Project Alchemist. And uh, thanks, Jeremy. Uh, didn't crash. Uh, worked almost perfectly. <laughs> and um, but I mean, it's interesting, like, um, what I wanted to do with these two-star things is basically like push the thing like at the very last minute. Because uh, first, I like to take risks. And second, um, it's real life, right? You have to make changes all the time. So being able to very quickly iterate on a filter and on the thing you do inside of uh, uh, Alchemist is actually shows how uh, practical it can be. And so these inspirations actually yeah, I'm showing now uh, have been one of the most uh, uh, liked feature of uh, Project Alchemist by the beta testers. Because you can go very fast, like uh, explore uh, variations uh, uh, and uh, in colors, and you can have like uh, mood, mood books and, and go from there, right? Anyway, so and create all these variations very quickly. Anyway, so that's it for uh, the first uh, uh, that keynote. Uh, I will say a few a few more words um, first about the program for the day. So you 
uh, we're here, we're just before break, uh, we're good on time, so that's okay. Uh, so then Wes will be uh, doing an in-depth demo of uh, Substance uh, Designer, and uh, we'll be going, uh, giving tips and tricks. Uh, Jeremy, here again, will be this afternoon giving a demo of Substance Paint Up, and the latest feature especially. And then we'll have Mark Austin from uh, Double Negative or DNAG um, for Pacific Rim Uprising. Super, super, super proud to, to have uh, Mark uh, uh, talk and, and do, this, do this demo, how they've been using uh, a Substance for, for the, the Jaegers, uh, as I was mentioning. Also super proud to have the CTO of Thea, Inter uh, Thea uh, Interactive, uh, Stephen Phillips, um, for the use of Substance uh, in a VR, uh, AR experience. And, uh, and uh, uh, at the end of the day, we will uh, reveal the winners of um, the David and Diana uh, apparel creation uh, contest that we uh, launched uh, in Seoul a few weeks, a few months ago. Um, and then we can have a cocktail, meet and greet. That will be the fun part. Um, speaking of uh, the, the experience, the VR ex uh, experience from Thea, uh, here is a screenshot of it. So it's, uh, it's all real time and it's in VR and uh, he will be talking about it. So I don't want to show you too much now, but uh, they will be uh, on booth 429 on the Star VR booth. Uh, and turns out this uh, booth is actually just in front of our own booth. And as soon as you see s people in suits, that's our booth, and they're just in front of us, right? <laughs> anyway, thank you again. Wanted to uh, say um, super, uh, super happy to have you today. Uh, more, more demos uh, will, will come after. Uh, we're, we will be around anyway. Uh, if you're like us, uh, we're hiring, uh, and uh, I, I this is the slide I'm using. F I've been using for like the last two years or so. Like every time I talk, because we're hiring all the time, and not all the time, but not a lot. Anyway, so uh, if you're interested, ping us, and uh, yeah, thank you again. Thank you. Guys. <laughs>